Good day everyone. Welcome to our webinar on dragon fruit processing. I am Rose Bonto from the Technological Services Division of DOST ITDI. Before we begin, ay mangyari lamang po na ipakilala ko muna ang aming ahensya. Ang DOST ITDI ay isang research and development institute under the Department of Science and Technology na pinamumunuan ng aming direktor na si Dr. Annabel V. Briones. Ang aming ahensya ay may layong gumawa o magpaunlad ng kaalaman o inovasyon at technotransfer sa pamamagitan ng pagbabahagi ng mga impormasyon, tulong teknikal at mga pagsasanay o training sa iba't ibang larangan ng industriya tulad ng mga sumusunod. Chemicals and Energy, Environment and Biotechnology, Food Processing, Material Science, and Packaging Technology. Layunin din ng institusyon na makapagbigay ng iba't ibang serbisyong teknikal gaya ng laboratory tests and analysis at siguraduhin din ang international traceability ng mga unit ng sukat o units of measurement sa pamamagitan ng mga calibrations. If you have any queries po sa aming mga programs and services, ay pwede po kayong sumulat o mag-email. I-address lamang po sa aming director at isend ninyo sa email address ng Technological Services Division. So, narito po ang aming mga contact details. Okay, ngayon naman po ay dumako na tayo sa ating webinar proper. So, let me introduce our speaker for this webinar. Our speaker is a fresh face from the Food Processing Division of DOST ITDI. She has a degree in Bachelor of Science in Food Technology from the University of the Philippines, Mindanao. In 2018, she has also been an exchange student at the University of Chukuba, Agrobiological Sciences in Chukuba, Ibaraki Prefecture, Japan. So currently, she is a Science Research Specialist 1 from the Food Processing Division of DOST ITDI. So ladies and gentlemen, our speaker for today, Ms. Pete Maverick Nicole Estudillo. Good morning po sa lahat. Ako po si Pete from the Food Processing Division of ITDI DOST. And today, we are going to talk about different processes sa dragon fruit. Specifically, I will focus on wine and vinegar making. So, sa mga hindi pa po nakakakilala ng prutas na ito, this fruit is also called pitaya, pitahaya, or sweet pear. It is likely to be originated from the Latin America and from there, uh, Southeast Asian countries and Southern China also have cultivated this fruit. So, including the Philippines, sa Pilipinas may makikita tayong plantation sa Cavite, Ilocos, Bicol, even sa Davao region and in certain areas of Pampanga, Nueva Ecija and Quezon. So, this fruit is from the cactus family. So, makikita nyo, hindi siya katulad nung mga fruit-bearing trees na nakikita natin na sa manga or sa banana. Ibang-iba ang dragon fruit because it is from the cactus family. And then, you can propagate it by seed. It has tiny little seeds. Yung nakikita nyo po na mm, black dots sa pulp niya. It, it is the dragon fruit seed, or you can also propagate it by stem cutting. So we have two varieties, the white fleshed and the red fleshed. And then, um, dito sa Pilipinas, what we usually do, kasi yung mga vines niya pwedeng humaba. So they put around 2 meters wood para lang maging support no mga vines and very prominent itong 
dragon fruit malayo pala makikita mo na na ay dragon fruit yung butas na yon it is because of its um, pinkish pinkish flesh and then may makikita ka ring mga soft greenish scales towards the end of the fruit if you look here sa informational um, nutrition information of the dragon fruit pulp we have a lot of water protein and it is also a source of vitamin C and iron. It is one of the fruits that has uh, it that contains iron. Ang peak season ng fruit na ito is usually July to October. So we have to remember that if ever tumaas or dumami yung supply ng dragon fruit natin, for example sa farm nyo, sobrang dami ng na na, na harvest nyo sa buwan na to. So, mahihirapan tayong ibenta yung lahat. Mahirap naman kung mabulok lang to, di ba? So, that is why we would opt to preserve the fruit. So, why do we need to preserve? First, to protect food against microbes and other spoilage agents. Second, to ensure that food is safe for future consumption. Third, to prolong food storage time, again, uh, para hindi ito agad-agad mabulok. And to allow many foods to be available year-round in great quantities. For us to be able to enjoy dragon fruit beyond its peak season, we can opt to preserve this fruit. So, marami tayong ways of food preservation. Marami tayong pwedeng pagpilian. Meron tayo dyang physical preservation, chemical preservation, and biological preservation. So, sa physical preservation, we have drying, pasteurization, that is um, killing uh, microorganisms through high temperatures, and then we also have freezing and refrigeration. So, kung meron kang refrigerator, Sa bahay or freezer, syempre alam nyo po na kapag hindi na ubos yung ulam nyo today, if you freeze or i-ref nyo muna para makain pa rin tomorrow morning. So, we also have chemical preservation. We can also add antimicrobial preservatives, acidulants, or we can control the water activity and moisture content of the food to preserve it. And then... We have a fermentation for biological preservation. Here are examples of the food product ideas that you can use using um, that you can make using dragon fruit. So, meron tayo siyang dragon fruit jelly. We can also make ready to drink juice from the dragon fruit. Juice powder. You can spray dry the dragon fruit pulp. Of dragon fruit juice to create a juice powder. Pwede rin tayong gumawa ng dragon fruit jam, dessert sauce, and other dried products using dragon fruit pulp. Kung marami naman kayong waste after these processes, pwede rin yung gamitin ito. Like yung pills, pwede tayong gumawa ng dragon fruit flakes, dragon fruit powder, or pwede rin natin candy yung pills. Gawin, pwede rin natin itong gawing um, animal feeds or fertilizer and even food supplement. Kasi meron ngayong mga studies regarding dragon fruit waste. It contains um, polyphenols that might be a good, might be good antioxidant for the body. And then we also have, for the seeds, you can also make seed oil or relaxing pillow pang fill filler sa ating mga unan and for the excess pulps or trimmings we can use we can make wine vinegar leather halaya or jam um um, because of a uh, limit of our time, unfortunately, we cannot cover all of these topics. Uh, we cannot um, discuss everything here, the food product ideas, I know. But we're going to focus on the biological preservation, specifically fermentation, 
ng wine and ng vinegar. So, fermentation is the science or is a processing of converting the carbohydrates to alcohols and carbon dioxide or organic acids using microorganisms. And the science of fermentation is called Zimmergy. So if you, he you heard it right, that we're going to use microorganisms sa pag-preserve ng ating pagkain. Now you might ask why we are going to use microorganisms. Diba they're the bad guys? Diba we're trying to kill germs? Well, actually, not all microorganisms are the bad guys. Actually, there are um, some microorganisms that can inhibit the bad guys that causes the sickness. So, hindi po lahat ng microorganisms masama. In fact, some of them are good for your tummy. So, we are eating a lot of fermented products daily. Meron tayo siyang vinegar, wine, at sara, bagoong, yung tinapay nyo every morning, fermented din yan, and yogurt. Ngayon, bakit ba natin, um, why would we choose fermentation over the other reservation methods? Na, um, first reason is the enrichment of the diet through the diversity of flavors, aromas, and textures in the food substrates. Second, the preservation of substantial amounts of food through lactic acid, alcohol, acetic acid, and alkaline fermentations. The biological enrichment of food substrates with protein, essential amino acids, essential fatty acids, and vitamins. Also, it is, fermentation can help eliminate anti-nutrients in the food and decrease in cooking times and fuel costs. But before we start the actual process, I'm just going to flash this reminder. Uh, whenever we cook or handle food, we must be aware of the GMPs or good manufacturing practices. Ano ba tong GMP? So it's just a set of guidelines that describes the methods, equipment, facilities, and controls for producing safe and wholesome processed food. Diba, isa sa mga rason ng magpreserve tayo ay para maging safe ang pagkain natin all throughout the year. So, kung sa process pa lang ay makaka makakakontaminate na tayo sa food, um, mawawala na yung reason natin kung bakit tayo nag-preserve in the first place. So, let us be aware of this um, three main contaminants for our food. So, parang tayong biological contaminant. Viruses, bacteria, parasites, insects and other organisms so halimbawa po may sakit kayo and uh, gumawa kayo na process kayo ng food it is possible na makontaminate niyo yung food with your disease if it's caused by viruses or bacteria kung may covid for example so wag na lang po kayong gumawa ng pagkain or mag-process ng pagkain and then we also have physical contaminant Plastic, steel wood, glass, metal, or other foreign objects. Madalas, ito ay nakukuha from the container na pinalalagyan ng food. Also, dust or even yung hair ninyo, um, contaminant ito sa pagkain. Kaya kailangan mag-hair net, kailangan mag-mask, ganun. And then, we also have chemical contaminants, pesticides, herbicides, Rodenticides, arsenic, mercury, and other toxins. So, make sure lang na malayo ang inyong pagkain or inyong, inyong kitchen from these chemicals. Also, I'll also give you tips on how to assess cleanliness sa inyong, inyong kitchen. 
First, there should be no visible dirt. Siyempre, wala kang makikitang dumi. Then, no greasy and beautiful when you rub the surface. And then, you can also use a rubbing test. You can uh, get a white handkerchief, rag, or tissue. Then, rub nyo lang sa surface. Again, sa rubbing test, you can use a white handkerchief, rag, or tissue. Then, rub it on the surface. Dapat wala kayo makikita ng dirt or grease from um, the rag or the tissue. And then, there should be no noticeable off odor. You can also use a wetting test. Dapat walang excessive water. And finally, microbial assessment. Mahirap naman gawin, pero you can use the other techniques that were mentioned. So, this is a picture from the study of Taylor in 1978 in an evaluation of hand washing techniques. So, makikita natin dyan, yung red spots, red areas are the areas most frequently missed during hand washing. And the blue areas are less frequently missed. So, let us remember that when we do hand washing, um, wag natin galigtaan yung mga areas na ito sa mga daliri, sa thumb, in between fingers. Now, we are always advised to hand wash. So, sana by this time, um, memorize na natin yung happy birthday pag nag-hand wash tayo. And then, we also have here a picture of an ideal worker. So, dapat as I said, hairnet, naka-hairnet, kasi mga dust or mga, ang inyong mga buhok pwedeng mahulog dun sa pagkain. And then, a clean shirt, apron, and dapat clean and manicured ang hands. No nail polish and jewelry worn. Uh, alisin muna natin ang ating mga um, relo, ang ating mga sing-sing, ating mga jewelry. Pag nagpa-process tayo ng pagkain. So, uh, first treat, properly groomed. Second, regularly bathed. Lagi naman po tayo naliligo, di po ba? Uh, healthy and certified free from contagious diseases. As I said kanina, you can contaminate the food with your disease. And then, you should have um, clean and hygienic habits and good work attitude and discipline. So, these are the ingredients and materials of our dragon fruit uh, wine making. So, ayan, nagawa na po tayo ngayon ng wine. First, we need our ripe dragon fruit. We prefer the red flesh variety. Kasi maganda po yung kulay nito after. Then, we need water, granulated sugar, and wine yeast. So, if you may ask kung pwede ba ang brown sugar, pwede rin naman po yung brown sugar. Kaya lang, baka mag-impart ito ng um, caramel flavors or other flavors sa ating wine. For this process or for this wine, gusto natin na umibabaw yung, yung flavor ng dragon fruit kesa dun sa sugar natin. And then, wine yeast. Meron tayo na bibili sa stores na baker's yeast. You can also use that, pero baka konti lang po yung alcohol content na makukuha natin from that. And then, these are our, uh, our materials. Clean sterile bowls, cauldron for pasteurization, measuring cups and spoons, strainer or cheesecloth, demijohn or any suitable container, cotton plugs, Needle thermometer, rubber tubing, wine siphon, and wine bottle. To sterilize, pwedeng padaanan ng hot boiling water ang mga ito. But you can also opt to sterilize your bottles in a double, uh, double broiler, pressure cooker, ganun po. 
So, now, let's go to the actual process. Unang-una, let's wash the fruits thoroughly. This is very important kasi we have to remove any dirt that may contaminate the pulp later. Next, we cut the fruit into quarters, slicing the pulp before peeling. And this will also reduce the contamination. And then, we puree the fruit, the, the fruit pulp. We can blend it or extract it manually. And then strain it through a cheesecloth or a strainer. After that, pag nakuha niyo na yung juice, we add one part of the fruit juice with two parts of water. And then, ang resulting volume nito, the fruit juice plus the water, lalagyan natin ng one part sugar is to one part ng fruit juice. Kuha ba natin? And then, we get our wine must. So, that's our wine must. For this, uh, for this recipe, we will get 18 to 20 degree bricks ng ating wine must. So, before proceeding further, um, I would like to discuss a little about the uh, sugar content and effect nito sa alcohol na makukuha natin. So, yung bricks, wag kayo masyadong mabahala sa, sa term. It's just a measure to, uh, to measure the amount of sugar in our solution or in our wine mass. So, as you can see here, as I said, kung susundin niyo po yung recipe kanina, you will have 18 to, 9, 18 to 20 degree bricks. It, bricks is uh, measured using a refractometer. Makikita mo yung reading dito. And then, um, may effect po ito sa alcohol kasi ito po yung kakainin, kakainin ng yeast natin. And then, depending on the final bricks, it will uh, reflect kung ano ang alcohol content ng wine natin. For this wine, for our wine, for our recipe, ang al percent alcohol ay 9 to 11 percent. Kung di na natin um, pupuntahan yung calculations nito kasi medyo mahaba na. If gusto nyo lang po i-measure, mag-experiment kayo sa bahay nyo, pwede kayong mag-measure ng bricks and then check nyo ang mga final bricks so you can get different varying um, percentage alcohol from your wine. Aside from refractometer, you can also use hydrometer. Yung hydrometer, meron na rin siyang nakalagay na potential alcohol content. So, hindi nyo na kailangan mag-compute nito kung meron na kayong hydrometer. But it's just an option. Medyo mahal din kasi ito. So, let's go back to the process. Let's go back to the process. So, ayun, may wine mask na tayo. If you can remember. Then, we will heat this uh, mask to boiling, to boiling at 50 degrees Celsius. Um, not to boiling, sorry. Uh, over, over boiling water at 50 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Yung uh, 50 degrees Celsius, yung wine mask natin for 30 minutes. And then, we will cool this. And then after that, we will add, uh, we will get about three-fourth from this must. Kukuha tayo ng konting amount from this. And then we will add one teaspoon of wine yeast. One teaspoon of wine yeast is to 18 cups of wine must. Yun yung ratio natin. So, why are we going to get one... Uh, a small part muna of this wine mask. Bakit hindi na lang natin ilagay yung uh, yeast agad-agad? It's because we want to activate our yeast first before adding it to the wine mask. If you see, our dry yeast, meron, meron yang um, 
hard layer that protects the cells inside. So for a time, we want to break into that hard layer. So we need to activate our yeast. Then after that, after activation, bubula na yung it will start to bubble yung solution nyo with the yeast. You can add that now to the wine mass, to all of the wine mass. And then after mi after mixing, gently lang, wag masyadong um, brisk, we add the wine mask with our yeast doon sa um, sterile container or demijohn and then do stopper the mouth of the container with cotton. Next, we leave that, let it ferment for three to seven days. So within four to seven, Four to seven days, pwede nyo a harvest. Store in a cool, dark, dry place. And then we replace the cotton plug with rubber tubing after the three to seven days. Then we add a uh, water at the receiving end of the rubber tubing. We will ferment this at 26 to 37 degrees Celsius. Usually, um, yan din ang temperature ng room. Ferment it for two or more weeks until there is no more liberation of bubbles. So, kanina, uh, dito pala, sa three to seven days, we are trying to uh, multiply, multiplication of our um, yeast cells. Pinaparami pa namin pinaparami pa natin sila dito. This time, nung nalagay tayo ng rubber tubing, we want them to produce more alcohol. Okay na tayo sa, sa, um, sa dami ng ating yeast cells. Now, we want them to produce alcohol. We, we put a rubber tubing kasi CO2 or carbon dioxide is also a product, a byproduct of the fermentation. So, para lumabas ito, we add the rubber tubing. And then, after two or more weeks, we will pasteurize the, the wine. So, by this time, pinapatay na natin yung yeast cells. Ayaw na natin na magproduce na ng alcohol or ayaw natin ng parami pa sila. We pasteurize it at 62 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes and then decant the clear liquid into a sterile container. We decant the, the liquid para ma-separate yung sediments or deposits sa baba. And just to give you a short overview of what's happening in the process, di naman kailangan malaman ito, pero... Just to give you a scientific overview, our goal is to get alcohol or ethanol. Yun yung, nasa, yun yung alcohol na nasa wine natin, ethanol. And uh, the process that makes it possible is the fermentation of our yeast, yeast cells, of fermentation of sugar, from sugar to ethanol and carbon dioxide. So we must remember na yeasts are also living organisms. So, namamatay rin sila. So, let us not deprive them of, of the nutrients and the temperature or proper environment na they will need to be productive and produce the ethanol. Then, after nun, nung na-pasteurize na natin yung ating wine, we will leave it for two months and then um, transfer it again to another to another bottle. Why? Again, we don't want to um, di natin gusto isali yung deposits sa final wine natin. So we have to rack the wine or transfer the wine from one bottle to another. You can use a siphon in this kasi ayaw natin na mag further contaminate or magka-contamination ang wine natin at this point so it is safer to use a siphon and then after that you can age the wine for a couple of months up to a year as desired and store in a cool dark dry place so for fruit wines hindi advisable yung mas masyadong mahaba na pag-age 
according lang sa mga wine experts. But for red wine, for example, or some white wines, they prefer to age it for so many years. But for fruit wines, um, experiment lang muna kayo kung um, hanggang ilan, ilang months or ilang years masarap pa yung wine or baka mag-develop siya ng ibang flavors na hindi desirable. So, very experimental itong aging for fruit wines. And then, ayun, after that, you are now ready to taste your dragon fruit wine. But, for some people, hindi sila masyadong mahilig sa wine. So, hindi, hindi naman kayo nag-promote ng wine, hindi naman kayo mahilig sa alcohol and alcoholic drinks. Um, you can opt to make vinegar instead. After, after making the wine, pwede kayong gumawa ng vinegar. So, from, the, from your wine, dilute it to 6%. As I said, we have 9 to 11%. We expect 9 to 11% from our process. So we dilute that to 6%. And then we add the mother vinegar or vinegar, mother of vinegar or vinegar starter. Ang ratio nito ay for every 1 liter of the diluted wine, we add 200 ml vinegar starter. And then allow it to ferment into vinegar for. One to two months. So, hintay hintay lang tayo. And then after that, um, we can get, we can, we can get our mother of vinegar from this. So, di ba, kumamitay ng mother of vinegar para uh, start yung fermentation process. After one to two months, we can also get the mother of vinegar from the fermented nano vinegar. And then, we decant the vinegar, yung liquid part, yung kunatin yung mother of vinegar, and then we pasteurize it for 65 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes para hindi na mag-continue yung fermentation. So, ang working definition ng, ng vinegar, it must be 4 to 5% acetic acid, and it is what we um, expect to get from this recipe. We will, we will get 4 to 5% acetic acid. So, let's enjoy our vinegar. You can dip it in any kind of uh, food na gusto nyo. Chicharon ba? Or kung healthy kayo, ano, um, cucumber, ganun. So, enjoy your vinegar. But, I'm also going to um, give you an overview how to calculate, or how to dilute your your wine for vinegar making. Diba? Diba? Um, you will get 9 to 11% ng, ng um, alcohol sa ating dragon fruit wine. So, we put that here. This is the Pearson square, by the way. So, we're just going to compute. It's very easy. Wag masyadong, uh, wag kayo masyadong ma, ma confuse or matakot sa mass nito. Madali lang talaga to. So, we put the alcohol here. We expect, for example, 9% alcohol ng wine. And then, we will dilute it. So, we're going to use water, which is 0% alcohol. So, walang alcohol ang water. And then, we put, sa gitna, yung expected or yung gusto natin na um, percent alcohol ng final product, which is 6% alcohol para sa vinegar natin. So, to, to get the ratio, we just subtract 6 from the 9. So, we get the difference of 9 and 6. Then, we get 3. Lalagyan natin dito sa lower right corner. And then, we also get the difference of, our, of the 0 and the 6. So, you also get 6. We put that here in the upper right corner of the square. And then, yun na yung gagamitin yun na uh, ratio for your dilution ng wine. So, you get 6 parts of wine and 3 parts of water to dilute a 9% wine into 6%. That is 1 is to 3. Uh, 1 is to 2 ratio. Madali lang po, di ba? 
madali lang for yung Pearson square. But you can also opt to use um, um, algebra if mas comfortable kayo dito. But for many people, this Pearson square will do. So, uh, so ang science behind nasatic acid fermentation, di ba po gumawa tayo ng alcohol or ethanol during wine making? So, in the presence of oxygen, our acetic acid bacteria converts the ethanol into acetic acid and water. So, that is how the science of acetic acid fermentation works. And just a reminder again, our bacteria are also living organisms. So, let's be mindful of the nutrients na kailangan nila and the temperatures na, and environment na kailangan nila to produce the acetic acid. So if you, this is just a rundown of the possible cost that you will get after making, for making your wine and your vinegar, you know. So, these are average costs kasi nafa-fluctuate ang market. This is just average. And then, for a bottle, of one liter bottle of wine, gastos nyo would be around 130.55 pesos. And for vinegar, if you include the cost for your wine, kasi yun yung gagamitin nyo for your vinegar, you will have about 113.30 pesos na cost. So, you might ask na medyo mahal nga siya yung cost. But actually, kasi ito yung, itong dragon fruit, um, dragon fruit products, we would recommend na export siya or bebenta siya. Hindi siya yung um, normal na nagagamitan nyo for everyday um, consumption. But you can also. But we would prefer na um, you start up a business for processing the dragon fruit and then and you will get much from it. These are also materials na kakailanganin nyo din po sa, sa wine and vinegar making. But, isahan lang naman po yung pagbili nyo nito. Hindi naman masyadong um, costly kasi once nilang bibili. So, you might, you might have to spend around 400 pesos for the materials. So, yun lang po. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Ms. Pete, for a very informative and comprehensive lecture. I think most of our audience now are excited to venture on wine and vinegar processing, especially yung mga growers natin ng dragon fruit. Okay, so for our viewers, if you have any questions on the lecture and presentation of Ms. Pete, you may send in your questions through the comment section and our training team will try to address them. Para naman po sa mga interesadong mag-venture into wine and vinegar making, ang DOST ITDI po ay mayroong technologies para dito. Meron po kaming wine kit and vinegar acetator. Both are available po sa aming licensed fabricator. So, you may send us again an email to get the details on how to procure the said kits. At uh, narito pong muli ang aming contact details. You may also call the Technological Services Division for other food technologies na ready for adoption. For technical service naman po, like use of facilities, shelf life testing, technical consultancy, and other processing uh, food processing services, you may directly contact our food processing division at these numbers. I would like to take this opportunity as well to thank the food processing division for making this webinar possible. To the chief of food processing division, Dr. Norbert Ambagan, thank you. To Ms. Elsa Falco and Ms. Pete Estudillo, thank you once again. And of course, to all of you, our participants, thank you for joining us today and we hope to have you again in our next webinars. So stay tuned to our Facebook page, DOST ITDI Updates, for our upcoming webinars and other schedules. See you!